Uh, the back of the Draeger ventilator, this is the instructor video. Uh, so just going to show a little bit about the back, kind of start up and whatnot. Uh, of course, start at the top here, on off switches right here. Lift the little tab up, push it in, it turns it on. Uh, this is your AC cable to plug it in. This thing can come undone, and we've seen it happen before. So if you're turning it on, it's not doing anything. Yeah, that's probably the problem. So push that thing in. Um, also, um, it does have an internal battery. I think it lasts two to three hours. Um, I'm not sure how charged yours will be. So it may initially run if you don't have it plugged in, but uh, it will alarm. It'll say something about the battery at the top, and which means you probably just need to plug this thing in. It's probably not detached from this part. You have the option of Neo Flow on here. This is actually kind of cool, but not really usable. This is for this ventilator can be used for neonates. Um, just kind of an extra feature that you that you got to come with it. This is uh, the end tidal hookup. Of course, we, our patients are our high fidelity or mannequins can't uh, exhale CO2, so you don't. This is really just for uh, looks purposes because you can't put it in line. Um, moving the way down, these are of course our air and oxygen tanks. Um, our, our air and oxygen hoses. Uh, air is what we're running essentially the machine off of because we're running off this the large compressor on the bottom. So the air is right here. It unscrews from right here. It actually goes down into here. Um, so your compressor uh, will output 50 psi up into here, up into your vent, and you're good to go. The thing about this line is, is if it ever comes undone for some reason, uh, it is pressurized. And to get this thing off, you have to push the top part out and it pops up. It's kind of loud. So it's just one of those pressure things. So you can see this thing kind of pops this way. This one at the bottom is if you're hooking another air, something else air into this, which you're not. So let's put this back in. Goes in, it clicks and holds. Um, so there's your air part. You can also get some leaks in these things. vents alarming low volume or air supply down and you got everything running you're thinking what's the problem you could have a leak around one of these things now doesn't ha happen very often in the lab but um, and then the compressor which is one of the first things I would turn on is right here so you have your it's plugged in also and you turn it on right here you can hear it pumping and it pretty much constantly runs uh, it doesn't and you hear it shut off a little bit, but you can hear it constantly kind of humming uh, once it pressurizes all the tubing. So that's that part of the air, and that's where we're really we're going to run it off of. Now we have another option, but we have to give it some oxygen, and that's just the way this thing works. If we don't give it any oxygen at all, we run it off two air, air hoses. The FiO2 and the oxygen sensors are going to be all screwed up. So uh, Union donated the tank. It's a, it's a grab-and-go tank. Um, you can see inside here, I'm not sure if they can get a shot of that one. Um, it's running about, it's in the green, which is between 2000 and, two, and 2200 PSI. And that's where it wants to be. Um, this is, uh, that's a full tank, of course. This is a grab and go, so there's a quick connect right here. When we screw this thing into it, it, it pushes that part in and gives oxygen out. Now, this hose, the green hose here, screws into here goes up in the vent so but the great thing is is we leave the vent on 21 percent you won't ever use this but you have to have this or it will alarm so what what i initially done just kind of barely screwed it on here and now it's not it just kind of holds the the hose there and doesn't actually activate it once i screw it in a little farther you'll hear screw it till it stops and now you've pressurized the ventilator with oxygen and air so that's really what you have to do what I would very recommend after after each use, screw this thing off because if you don't, uh, this stuff is going to slowly leak over time, and you're on your tank dry. Now, if you your tank runs dry, um, have somebody bring it to Union and I can refill it. So, or not refill it. I'm just going to get you another one. We just change them out. So, um, screw it in. Once it stops hissing, you're at where you need to be. So. So if you notice a few months into it, um, and maybe somebody left this thing hooked up, you notice that your vent's saying 
oxygen down or air supply down and you can't fix it, look over at your tank. If your tank's really low, zero would be the, the key. Uh, somebody needs to bring it over to Union so I can change it out. So that's how that works. I'm gonna screw it on just to get this bad boy started up. So big key with the oxygen tank, of course, there's a lot of safety involved. You wanna always have it in this. It's not good just to have it like this because somebody come along and kick it. And remember, you probably heard stories before where these become projectiles and kill people. So we like to keep them in here at all times. So we have air and oxygen hooked up, compressor going. Let's turn our ventilator on, push this little flap up right here, right there, and turn it on. Kind of has the initial kind of annoying alarm. That's okay. Also has a cooling fan here, um, which those can get dirty after a while. If they get real dirty, you can start messing with your ventilator a little bit. You wouldn't want to burn it up. So that'd be a time where you bring a little bit of uh, air duster in, kind of spray it out a little bit, keep that fan clean. All right, turn it around. So initial startup screen comes up in the standby screen. It's really easy to activate. You just hit this and go. If, if anybody wants to go into previous patient, they can use the old or put a new patient. Uh, you can put P's or Neo. All that's going to do is going to limit your tidal volumes. You can set. So generally just leave it on adult, hit start and go. Now I'm going to go through the circuit a little bit uh, in case the circuit comes undone or you have some massive leaks or you have some major issues. So we have two different sides. Of course, inspiratory, you see your arrow going down right there and then your expiratory which is going back into the vent which is right there the inspiratory stays intact it does not come out the expiratory does oh and it kicked in itself let's put it back in standby okay check settings whatever okay so we have our expiratory side and we have what in, what in here is called an expiratory filter now, if we go down in here, you might have to go down a little bit lower for this. Can you see it? Yeah. Oh, really? So there's a little flap over here on this side. You push this in, and this whole thing comes out. So this is your expiratory filter. So this is uh, what it does, an expiratory valve also called. Um, this is a reusable one. Of course, you're not going to be using it on patients, so you can keep using it. It's pretty sturdy. It'll last for quite a while. To put it back in, it just goes in and pops. When it, when it clicks, it's in. Take it out, it does this, it comes out like this. So if that comes out, that's a big source of leaks, of course, if that's not set appropriately. So push that in, click, we're good to go. This little doogee over here, this is called a flow sensor. It looks at the, um, it has a couple of wires across it and those wires heat up. This gives you all of your patient data. So every bit of patient data comes from these two wires. So pretty technical. Um, clinic, uh, in, the, in, the, in the lab, it's not going to be a big deal. Clinically, we had a lot of problems because of mucus and moisture and whatnot, but you shouldn't have any problems with this. If you start getting crazy numbers, then it might be a flow sensor issue. This does a flow sensor calibration every so often. Also, if your numbers get real crazy and you're like, I don't know what to do with this, I'm, I work at the hospital 6 to 2.30 every day, so you can call me up. So we've troubleshooted these things to the nth degree because we had them for about six years. So. This just goes in, there's a little um, little pin system in here this goes into, it inserts into that, those wires do. And then it, you just activate it, you push it inward, and it seals itself into the expiratory valve, kind of like this. This one goes in, this, push it in, and then it goes like this and seals right in there. And that's exactly how it sits. So your air comes back through here, if that's on the outside of this and you have any air leaking around it, it'll cause, cause issues. This has a little flap that goes over it, kind of like it's good for, so nobody messes with it. Put that flap over it. Now, the circuit, super easy. Um, well, you say, well, what's, what side's inspiratory side? Well, we're, we're always taught and this is kind of the way it is, but whichever side has the, the probe area here is inspiratory side because that's where a temperature probe would go. 
So you want to measure the temperature of the air before it gets to the patient. It would do no good to measure it after it came away from the patient. So always know that whatever side has the temperature probe is the inspiratory. So that would be blue in this case. You just take this blue one and this does have an extra port on it. So if that would come undone, there's a big source of a leak there. So make sure that's closed up. That just goes right here and pushes up there. And of course, process of elimination. That's gonna be your expiratory side, like that. Comes out to the patient Y. At this point, uh, we have, just gave you a generic uh, HME, heat moisture exchange. Uh, this is what you'd have on a patient. The nice thing about this, it goes on to here and it kind of rotates so that your test lung can go either way. Now make sure that this little dude here doesn't come off on your HME because you're gonna lose a ton of flow, uh, sorry, a ton of pressure in there and it's gonna throw off your values. Another place for it to leak. So we got leakage possibly there, leakage possibly here, over here. We also have this little MDI port here that can come undone. It's gonna leak out of there. You'll be able to hear that. That just goes and covers up. And then your test lung, the cool thing about these test lungs are um, even though it looks small, it, uh, you can deliver up to 800 tidal volume with it. And it actually kind of recoils like a normal lung does. It kind of sits, you can kind of rotate either way. What I would recommend doing is kind of taking it and leaving it right there. If it gets wedged in here, it's going to like auto cycle when it tries to open up. And then if you let it hang like this, what it will do, it'll trigger on its own. It may just like start hyperventilating. So the kind of, I kind of like to sit over here so it's kind of stable. Of course, this is our extension. If you ever have any problems with that, 238-7586 is our extension, so, and they can get a hold of me, Jimmy McKenna, anytime with that. So other than that, it's pretty much easy to start up. I went through that with the, with the student video. Start it up and go. Uh, feel free to manipulate these alarms. They're always, this thing's always starting up in SIMV. If you want me to come back and change it some other time and say, I'm tired of seeing SIMV every time I start up, I want to change it to CMV. But I think it's kind of cool. And you see this come up right here? Get a shot of that real quick if you can. That always comes up and it goes away in like no time, no time flat. It just says your CO2 monitoring is not in line. That's normal. So that's a normal yellow alarm. It goes away. You'll, every time you turn it on, it does that. But anyway, if you want me to come and change your startup settings, that's great. I can. I think it's kind of cool to leave them messed up because it makes them have to go in and actually change it each time. I could even make it like in a really weird mode if you wanted me to, to have a startup. But uh, I think there also is a manual that comes with this and Robert has the manual. Um, it will tell you every, there's different codes to get in and you can change your startup and whatnot. But if you want me to come over and do it, it's no big deal. I can do that anytime. Um, other than that, it's good to go. And you see we're running just fine. I'll just turn it off again. get rid of that um, not much else to do with it I mean there's we can mess with the screen a little bit that's if we go into uh, system setup and we go to screen you can see you can change it to like a um, let's see we can change all these graphics and stuff oh they're a day night sound so the sound day night on there touch that and you can turn it to night screen which makes it kind of dark which is kind of nice if the lights are dim so if you're doing a little presentation, the lights are dim. That night screen is really nice. Um, and then also, if you want the alarms up to their normal amount, we turn up to 16. Oh, that could get pretty annoying. So I just turned down to one just because you're in the classroom. Daylight savings, go in and hit system setup, country, and then change your, change your time on there, which is easy enough. 1250. Not that you worry about that that much, but whatever. And then right now we're still in standby. So we would say, well, how, how, what do we do now? How do we get rid of this? You just got to turn it off in the back. Once you're in standby, you can shut it off. Now, if, you're, if they're ventilating a patient and they don't go into standby and they shut it off, that's fine. Um, because, it, of course, you're in, in the setting, you can shut it off anytime you want. Shut it off is easy. Go around the back again. Make sure that you do these main things each time you shut it off. Let's see, we'll get this thing figured out here. It is heavy too. Shut this part off right here. One. Second thing I would do, go down here. That off. And last and always, take this.
unscrew it. You can either leave it all the way off, or like I said, just kind of barely put it on there, just so it kind of holds but doesn't activate it and leak oxygen out. And that would be it. That's all you need to know.